It's a great pleasure to be here. And uh, I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me to give this talk and to um, point out that it's joint work with Jean-Philippe Bouchot of Capital Fund Management uh, and Nicole Normal's Pierre Vieira. Um, I'd like to start out by saying that we agree with O.A. Peters that non agudicity is important uh, and has something interesting to add to economics. Um, but we're going to exploit non agudicity in a different way from the way that O.A. has done in his work. We're going to build a, a traditional economic model with one million agents, each of whom will maximize this discounted subjective expectation of the log of consumption. We're going to place our agents into a quasi non ergodic environment, and I will say what I mean more about what I mean by that later. Um, and we will show that they never learn the truth, and that as a consequence, wealth in our model becomes very unequally distributed. Uh, I'm going to take our argument up in three stages. I'm going to begin by talking about um, a beauty contest game. And by that, I mean an analog um, of an idea that was first floated by Keynes in the general theory, um, in which he argued that the stock market uh, is a lot like um, a beauty contest in which the judges are asked not to judge how beautiful the contestants are, but how beautiful they think the other judges think the contestants are. We're next going to endow our people with one consumption good each week, and we're going to let them trade with each other in a complete set of financial markets contingent on a random uh, observable public signal. We're going to show that in this environment, market prices do not reveal the truth. Um, and uh, interestingly, our model has important implications for the wealth distribution uh, and we're going to show that the uh, index of wealth inequality, the Gini coefficient, looks a lot like Gini coefficients in real world data. So the structure of the game is that a million people will be asked to guess the probability that a biased coin will come up heads. Uh, we're going to represent the probability of a head by the realization uh, of a random variable S, which will take the value one um, if the coin comes up heads and zero if it comes up tails. We'll assume that each person has a subjective probability that we call PIT. Um, and at the beginning in period one, PI1 will itself be a random variable drawn from um, a uniform distribution on zero one. So everybody begins with a different random prior. We're then going to assume that a central player um, observes the beliefs of all of the individual people uh, and flips a coin using the uh, average probability over all n people. Uh, and we'll be looking at a lot of results here where n becomes very large. Now, we think about this um, part of the game as uh, communication on social networks. Uh, so, uh, for example, um, everybody in our econo economy will form a belief about what they think is going to happen to the stock market. Um, that belief will be communicated on Twitter or, or on Facebook. Um, and there will be a central agent who we think of as an influential financial journalist who will then write an article which will have a positive bent with some probability uh, PT um, and a negative bent with some probability 1 minus PT. Now, the population structure in this game matters a lot. So suppose, for example, that the set of people never changes over time, everybody lives forever, uh, and people update their probabilities using observed sample frequencies. Uh, and that leads to a situation for large n, where the true probability PT evolves according to the equation I'm showing you here. And it turns out the dynamics of P are very similar to the polya urn that you heard about um, yesterday and the day before. So here I'm showing you three different runs, all of which are starting from the same initial condition for this model. Um, and you'll notice that uh, in each case, the probability of a particular outcome converges to a number, but it's a different number in, in each case. Now this process is, is non-ergodic, uh, and that makes it an interesting process to study, but it's not a very interesting model of why people continue to disagree about stock market prices. Because although uh, the value of the eventual probability that people for, uh, agree upon is, non, is, is history dependent, everybody eventually agrees with everybody else. So we're going to modify this environment in two ways. 
First, we're going to assume that people die with some probability delta, um, and they're replaced by a new person who begins life with a random prior with mean a half. Uh, and that prior will also be drawn then from a uniform distribution. Secondly, we're going to assume that people weight the recent past more heavily than the distant past using constant gain learning with weight lambda. And that leads to the process for the probability that I'm showing you at the bottom of this slide. Uh, the parameters are important for this model and we're going to choose the period to be one week. We're going to set the annual discount rate for everybody to be the same and equal to 0.97. So that would be a 3% um, an annual interest rate. Um, we're going to choose uh, delta, which remember is the probability of death, um, to be such that the, uh, the, the length of life that people will live on average is 50 years. And we're gonna choose uh, lambda to be equal to the square root of delta. And that choice is important for, um, for that particular choice. Uh, the, the time that it takes for your prior to be completely swamped by new data is about a year. Uh, and that choice is interesting because it implies that asymptotically, um, the distribution of probabilities converges to an invariant measure um, which is itself uniform on zero one. So notice this is a probability distribution over probabilities. Now, for this variant of the model, I'm showing you three different runs. Um, and notice that instead now of converging to a number, for each particular draw, um, the, the probability of the good outcome is moving very slowly uh, over the entire interval zero one. And this is an example of what we mean by a quasi non ergodic process. Now, in particular, the process is, however, ergodic, um, but it, the, the, the difference between a, a quasi-ergodic and an ergodic uh, process is that the time series average um, in order for, um, for ergodicity to hold is, is potentially astronomically long. So it will be true that if you take a very long draw from a single draw of the process and you take the mean, that mean will be a half. And if you take the ensemble average over very many uh, draws from the invariant measure at a point in time, that will also equal a half. But the time needed for those two concepts to be the same is order of one over delta. And that means as, as people live longer and longer, that time um, uh, diverges. Now, uh, the next step we're going to take is to let people make contingent bets uh, on the outcome by trading a complete set of securities. And we show that some people in this process become very rich and other people become very poor. And importantly, the market price um, does not reveal the true probability. Instead, the market price reveals a wealth weighted probability. Um, and there's an interaction, a strong coupling effect between wealth and probabilities, which means that even in the large end limit, this object, the probability that you would infer from looking at market prices does not converge to the true probability PT. Um, as a consequence, everybody disagrees with everybody else, even in the limit, uh, and everybody thinks that they know more than the market. And the wealth of an individual person evolves in this economy uh, contingent on staying alive, according to the equation I'm showing you on this slide. Um, uh, and if this person dies, wealth is reset to a number uh, that we call H, which stands for human wealth, and we can compute that, uh, that number H as a function of the parameters of the model. So um, interestingly, people who agree with the market probability have little incentive to trade. People who disagree um, will either become spectacularly rich uh, or spectacularly poor, and the further away their belief is from, um, from uh, the, the true probability, uh, the, the faster that process will occur. Now, interestingly, our model is an absolutely standard dynamic stochastic general equilibrium model, uh, which any self-respecting macroeconomist would be, uh, I believe, quite happy to adopt. The only difference from standard economic theory um, is that we're replacing the Rashton expectations assumption with constant gain learning. And importantly, the self-referential nature of the learning process implies that the world is quasi non ergodic and as a consequence, our agents never learn the truth, um, even when uh, there, there's a very, very large number of agents. Uh, the picture I'm showing you here is a, a single draw of 300 years of weekly data. And I'd like to draw your attention to the top right picture, 
and which shows you uh, the difference between uh, the true probability over time and the, and the probability um, of a good outcome that you would infer from the market from uh, observing market prices. So, and this is in percentage terms. So notice the percentage difference between these two probabilities, most of the time is very small, um, but occasionally it can be as large as 15%. And these differences do not go away in the large N economy. The other thing I'd like to draw your attention to is the bottom right picture, which shows you the price of a security, which pays one consumption unit uh, in the event of a head. And you'll notice that this, this uh, price uh, moves uh, slowly and randomly uh, again over uh, the, the, uh, the whole um, zero one interval. Um, interestingly, the wealth distribution, which is appearing here in the bottom left, uh, can be shown to have a Pareto tail with a, uh, a slope coefficient of 1.4. Now that implies that the, uh, the mean of the wealth distribution exists, but the second and higher moments do not. Um, and that's pretty close to uh, estimates from real world data, which place uh, estimated tail coefficients at about 1.5. Here I'm showing you the Lorentz curve for uh, the simulated run of the data that I was showing you there. Uh, and a, a, a single uh, number to measure inequality is often, the Gini coefficient is often used, which is twice the distance, twice the area rather, between the red line and the blue curve. And, and for our uh, simulated data, that's 0.7. Uh, and here you can see Gini coefficients from um, a bunch of real world data. 0.7 is pretty close to the numbers we see in reality. So the last step we take is that we show that the, uh, the, the trades that, we, uh, that, that are carried out using uh, basic securities can be replicated uh, in our economy um, using debt, which is a security which pays one unit in both states, and equity, which is a claim to a dividend of D units, if and only if the public signal is, uh, is good. And our interpretation is that uh, what's happening here is a self-fulfilling pro prophecy, which is conveyed to market participants by the publication of a, a positive leaning article in a publicly available source. So for example, Martin Wolf might write an optimistic piece in the FT based on his aggregation of private information through social networks. Uh, and as a consequence, the firms in this economy will pay dividends that week. So uh, finally, thanks for listening. And uh, here's a shameless piece of advertising for my latest book, which you can uh, buy on Amazon for the price of uh, two pre-COVID lattes. Thank you very much. <laughs>